What, why would you pick this? Why would you pick this as the opening clip? Huh? Janice? Th Janice, what the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, what, 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 what do you think, huh? You like that? I don't know if that feedback's coming through, but I can sure hear it in my headphones. <laughs> ah! Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 216. That's right, I said it. And I'll say it again. Episode 216. Y'all need to start leveling up, baby. Fucking David Goggins. He's all over my For You page. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card, but you'll find out anyway because we'll talk about it. My For You page is swarming with those David Goggins <laughs> videos where it's just like a chick and she's like bouncing her titties and then it's like... Y'all need to level up. Y'all need to get the fuck off your ass and start doing push-ups. Do you know what video I'm talking about? Do you hear that? I'm hearing a buzzing in my fucking headphones, and I, di I dislike it. Ooh, I hope that's not coming through. I really hope that's not coming through. Uh, oh. Yeah, I'll show you. What is that noise? That should be it. Nope. Still, it's still coming through. Mm. I hope it doesn't come through in the edit. This, this kind of video right here. Well, everybody, it's Groundhog's Day again for David Goggins. If you pan it down here, you see it's about 3 o'clock in the morning, and there's not a car or a person in sight. If you pan over here, it's the same thing. Not a car or a person. That's, this one's a little tamer, but the, okay, here's one. I love you more than a friend. I know I shouldn't. I know it's wrong, but it's true. I can't be just friends with you. A lot of people say that nothing's impossible. Shit. I even said that nothing's impossible several times. Yeah, dude, life. it gets you fucking a pumped, life. man. It gets you fucking jacked. It gets you yacked, dude. It just wants to make you fucking go out and get shit done, man. Fucking level up, baby. I'm telling you, the winter's coming, and y'all are going to start getting lazy. Every one of you are going to start getting lazy. I know I did it every year, but guess what? David Goggins is on my inside this time and i'm gonna fucking level up dude all the way max you ain't gonna stop this train and y'all should too do, do it too hey alexa volume max last time you could barely hear alexa alexa uh what do you think about david goggins sorry Alexa Prize is not available in your locale. What? Alexa, what do you think about David Goggins? Sorry, Alexa Prize is not available in your area. What does that mean? Alexa, who is David Goggins? David Goggins is an American retired United Alexa, States... Alexa, stop. Alexa, are you going to level up? Alexa... Are you going to level up? Weak. She's weak, dude. Weak into... Oh. I just spilt. I spilt. Oh, I caught it in time. I caught it. Look at this stack. Look at that stack. That's every episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast right here in my fucking hand. That's every single episode right here. Have you ever done that many of anything? I don't think so. I'm David Goggins. Me. 
I'm the one. Stop it. Oh, it's doing it. Maybe it's this cord, maybe. I don't know if it's picking up for you guys. Do you want to watch another one? I want a boyfriend so bad. I want him to hold my hand and- Oh, fuck that! <laughs> and fuck them! <laughs> How bad do you want this? I want it! If it's as bad as you want to live, or breathe, yeah, or sleep, motherfucker. whatever the hell it may be, yeah. I'll work with you. I mean, how did you get to where you are? Woo! You know how to do it. You know exactly how to be. You yeah, know how to dude. Be you don't Come on! Me. You don't want it. Yeah. You're lazy. You're fat. You know exactly what to do. And you're ugly. Exactly what to do. You know exactly what to fucking do. It. do. Do it! I want a boyfriend. Huh? That my, my for you page is just full of it, full of it. It's <laughs> every second video is just one of those. And you know what? I love it. I, I soak it up. I fucking, I, I don't know, dude. It gets me fucking yoked. I love them. Even if you don't like, even if you're like Sean Strickland and you think David Goggins is a weird motherfucker. I don't care. It doesn't matter, dude. Look what he's done. Look what he, it's just, it, ah, he gets you. He grabs you right by the nuggets and fucking rips you down. I get other ones too, like these. There's a moment when every boy realizes no one's coming to save him. And that's when he becomes a man. That hurt, you know? And I think that just, that flicked this switch in me where I was like, okay. It's the song. It's, this, this. it's always this fuck song too. And, uh, fuck that unmotivated mind. Yeah, fuck and that shit. Anyway. Fuck that shit. You need to work. Depression is a yourself. bunch of bullshit. And it doesn't Tuck exist. The and neither does anxiety. Head. You gotta figure out how to win when things aren't going to win. Fuck the drugs. Fuck the cigarettes. Yeah. Fuck that dumb bitch. Yeah. It all starts fucking today, Fuck right? it all. No more fucking issues. No more fucking we around. We need to get stronger. We need to get ballsier. We Let's need to get fucking tougher. go, dude. We need to Winter's not be afraid coming, of failure. And we're gonna level the fuck up. Hats, bro. It's you against you. You against you. And if you misunderstand that, you have a real problem. Yeah. A yeah, dude. <laughs> it gets me going, man. It gets me, gets me all tingly on the inside. But that's not really what we're doing. I just wanted to... Uh, yeah. Okay? Don't let, the, don't let the winter blues fucking take you down. Because you know it's gonna. It does it for everyone every goddamn year. The winter comes and everyone shuts down. They stay in their house. They stay lazy. They don't eat. or they I mean, they do eat. They overeat. And they don't get any exercise. They don't get any sun. They just sit around like a slab of meat on a, on a cold winter's day. Ah, But not this year. This year it's going to be fucking different. Uh-huh. For me and for you. All right? No more fucking slouching this winter. Get the fuck up and do some shit. Yeah, we're doing it, baby. We're fucking doing it. And you, you ain't going to stop me no matter what. Okay? Nothing can stop any of you. You can do it. Just push through. You got to fucking want it and just do it. And never give up. No matter what. If you poop on Mount Everest, because of the cold, harsh environment, it's kind of like a freezer, meaning the poop stays there for a long time. And with its many climbers, the mountain is now covered in poop. When the ice melts, this waste can even slide down the slope, creating what's known as a poop slide. But since 2014, climbers are now required to take their poop with them, which has helped cut back on this problem. New York City streets were covered in horse poop in the late 1800s. With thousands of horses pulling on the streets every day, the city struggled to manage the massive amounts of waste. The stench and unsanitary conditions were unbearable. The poop also attracted flies and rats. 
creating further health hazards. Now, they tried to impose regulations to control the problem, but it wasn't really fixed until the automobiles started replacing horses. <laughs> what do you think about that, huh? Isn't that why the houses are raised off the, off the ground level in New York? That's why there's stairs that lead up to the house? <laughs> Isn't that why the houses are raised in New York so you don't have to step on the shit? Isn't that what fucking Jimmy Carr said? You saw the video. You know what video I'm talking about. <laughs> you guys got any You guys- You guys- You guys-, got, you guys got Halloween's almost here. It used to be my favorite time of the year. I don't know how I feel about it anymore. It's alright. No, it's good. We like it. We kinda like it. No, I like it. Eh, it's alright. I don't know. No, it's good. Do I want to dress up? I don't fucking know. David Goggins wouldn't dress up. <laughs> I know I'm not David Goggins. I know, I know. Trust me, I know. I just got bit by the bug, and now it won't fucking leave me alone. All right, it'll pass. It'll pass. I've been getting poop videos, some vomit, and lots of David Goggins. That's, that's my For You page nowadays. It's not like it used to be. Remember, I remember when TikTok first came around and I hated, I didn't, I didn't like the idea of it. I said to myself, I don't want to use this app. It's for teenagers who like to dance and, and fucking sing. Eh, why would I want that? And then I gave it a shot and you know how it turned out. If you watch my earlier episodes of the podcast, I, I got, I got into it and I liked it a lot. And then YMH started getting into it and then that made me want to get into it even more because, uh, I loved YMH. Still love them, but not as much as I used to. And, uh, yeah. It's just like a drug, dude. It's, it's nice in the beginning. And then the more you do, the less enjoyable it becomes. I shouldn't say TikTok's like less enjoyable now. It's just not what it used to be. I'm still getting content that is very relative to my situation. I eat poop and vomit and David Goggins. But uh, it's just not what it used to be. That's all, that's all I can say about it. It's just not what it used to be. It used to only be like hilarious, funny fucking videos. It's crazy. It You watch the evolution of it. These apps and these algorithms, they just fucking... They curate and they change over time. It's wacky and it's wild. The early days of just YouTube and Facebook, you never had that algorithm. There was an algorithm, but it wasn't as fucking complex and uh, precise as it is nowadays. Huh? We live in a wacky fucking wackadoo world, guy. I've got so much shit, so many videos, so much stuff to talk about. This is a, this is a wild and wonderful day. Uh, but it is fight week. Okay. All right. UFC Noche. <laughs> it's coming up this Saturday, boys and girls. And I am fucking stoked. I can't fucking wait. It's going to be great. I've been looking forward to this. I really have. All right. So uh, we could just, I guess we should just get right into the fight predictions right now. Huh? What do you think? Let me just show you a little, uh, a little boopski boo. I got to organize all this shit, but I shouldn't do it on the podcast. <laughs> there was the, there, I'm sure you, you, if you're, if you follow UFC at all, you might've seen this. There is like an AI generated fucking video of Alex Pereira speaking English. And it's the strangest shit. It looks undetectable. You would never know that he's not speaking English in this. The voice, the cadence, the rasp, it's all there. You would watch this and you'd be like, hey, what? He learned English? So let's watch it. 
I I only have the clip. I only have this clip with this guy commenting over it. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the original, but uh, doesn't matter. We still right, we've to gone see too it. far now. This is just a bit weird. Anthony He's Smith, British. I let him take my back, put the hooks in, and give him five minutes to finish me. We can bet. Like he what? said, I get a 50k bonus. He said it was a sure thing. So if he sees me saying this here, I want him to accept. He takes my back, sees that my arm was trapped. No, he has to finish. Now, unless Pereira has been secretly. Um, <laughs> how accurate is that? If he could speak English, that is what it would sound like. And I'm sure he's going to learn English eventually, right? Or maybe he won't. What if he doesn't? I think he is, though. I've seen videos of him, like, trying to learn the English language. I think he is actively doing it, but he honestly doesn't have to. And that's what makes him so goddamn special. Is he is one of the biggest names in combat sports right now. We're living in the moment right now where he is one of the biggest fucking names out there. And he doesn't even speak English. When has that ever happened? Has that ever happened? At least in UFC. If we're just talking UFC, think about all the legends of the sport. They all spoke English. And if they didn't speak English at, at first, they learned English when they became someone. Because they had to. They had no choice. But Alex Pereira, he doesn't have to, man. He doesn't have to. And honestly, nowadays, people probably, well, no one will have to. I think we'll get to a point where no one even has to speak any specific language. Because we'll all have chips implanted in our brain. And so when I talk to you in Spanish, it'll just go to your fucking head in whatever language you speak. If I speak Spanish and you speak English and I talk to you in Spanish, you're going to receive it in English. And then we'll just get to a point where there will just be one molded language that just gets fucking compressed together and then everyone will be like bah, bah, beep, 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 beep. or we won't even have language huh think about that guy think about that guy we'll just communicate through fucking thought it'll just be like i want to see your booty i want to smell your pancakes i want to touch your graham crackers that's how we'll flirt You think privacy is bad now? You think you have no privacy now? <laughs> you wait till we all have Neuralink, okay? You wait. You see all these pedophile videos online of people, of pedophiles getting caught, you know? They they go online, they pretend that they're talking to a little, little boy or a little girl, and then they meet at a fucking Walmart, and then they were like, hey, Terry. But it's just a big man waiting for him, and they fucking humiliate him on camera. Okay, well, in the future, they're not even going to have to set up traps like that for pedophiles. They'll just be fucking reading everyone's mind, and they'll be like, oh, he's thinking about little boys. Let's get him. He's thinking about little boys. All right? And then here's what's going to happen. You're just going to be sitting down, eating lunch at Starbucks with your fucking pumpkin spice frappa lappa chappy. All right? And a thought's going to come into your head. You're going to be like, what was that little boy doing yesterday with that pancake? And then some pedophile hunter is on the search. He's on the hunt. And if he sees any indication of a little boy, it's going to set off his radar, and he's going to go, that's a pedophile. And you're like, no, 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 it was just this guy, this little boy had a pancake yesterday, and it was weird. I don't give a fuck. You were thinking about little boys. You can't think about little boys. And then no one's going to be allowed to think about little boys. Jackpot. All right? Jackpot. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's going to get worse. Think about all the things that could happen. You can't. You can't even think about all the negatives that can happen because... We have no concept of, of that reality. It was the same with the internet. Before the internet was around, we didn't know the fucking side effects of it. When the internet was first established, we were like, this 
is going to change everything for the better because we will have constant constant access to any sort of information immediately at any time. Immediately. We don't have to go to the dictionary. We don't have to go to the encyclopedia. We can just whip out the internet and go bop, bop, boop, bop, beep, bop. There's our answer. But look what it's done. Look what it's done. There's too much information. And we don't know what's true. We don't know what's false. And people get into conversations and they try to win the argument by whipping out their phone. And they give it a quick goog. And they go, oh, boop, boop, boop. Look, I'm right. You're wrong. But what source is it? Who knows? Families destroyed. Social media, okay? Social media is bad, dude. We all know it's bad. But you got to learn. But the thing is, you just got to learn how to control it. Stay out of the comment section. That's the number one rule. You can't get involved with the comments on any sort of social media, the good or the bad. Stay the fuck away from it all. All right, because all the good, the good comments, what do they do? Okay, they just inflate your ego, make you feel good. Oh, Justin, I love your podcast. You're doing such a good job. Woohoo. And then the negative ones are, you know, they come at you and then they're like, you're a fucking piece of shit. Get off the internet, blah, blah, blah. You don't deserve anything. You're a fucking ugly bastard. All right? But if they were in in your face, if they were right in front of you, they would never say it. It's just, you know, what, do I, what am I doing here? You know what I'm talking about. The thing is, you can't get involved because you're just going to bicker back and forth about nothing. It, that, you're not even having an argument. You're having an argument about nothing because that person doesn't actually think that way. And if they were in front of you, it'd be, they don't know you. Like it's, so you gotta, I like to do the Joe Rogan method and that is post and ghost. Don't interact with any of it. Just post it and ghost it. Get rid of it. Fucking forget about it. All right. You know, your values, you know, your morals. The thing is though, but, but like he said in a recent podcast that he did with that top gear guy is you can't, the posting and ghosting thing is great. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. Absolutely do it. But you can't, uh, you can't let it get, you can't let your uh, thoughts and expressions and opinions get it, get, get a hold of you. You know what I'm saying? Because if you just, you post and ghost, and if you just ignore everything, you got to be slightly aware of the conversation. Just 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 be aware of what's going on around you. Cuz if you just say whatever the fuck you want all the time without any regard for the impact that it has, and if you become a, a big enough name, eventually it'll it could catch up to you and potentially ruin your career. Because you you still got to pay attention to the audience, all right? You don't just want to constantly disrespect or do do anything that can push your channel or whatever podcast in the, in a bad direction. So, you know, even though you, you do post and ghost, you still got to be aware of what's going on around you and don't let things get out of hand. If you're smart enough, which most people are, you can manage it. You just don't let things go to your head. Don't let things go to your head and don't fuck with the comments. All right. And you could say to yourself, well, what do you know? What do I know? I don't, I can't really speak on it because uh, my channel alone is not big at all. But what I do know is I've been on specifically YouTube since 2005. I know I've said it over and over again, yada, yada, yada. But I've seen the evolution of this platform and I've seen... The biggest content creators come and go and come and go. And no matter what, the common thread between all of them is that they stay away from the comments. You don't fuck with the comments ever, ever. It's not healthy. It's the worst thing you can do. And it was, that was even established back in like 2007 when social media was like just blossoming okay 
But back then they had to learn all that. And there was a grace period where there wasn't these trolls and there wasn't these people who just hated for the sake of hating or just haters in general. People were still normal on the platforms. And that was that was only a small window. But I remember that window. And it was nice. It was nice. And YouTube wasn't even that big either. So like if you had 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, you were on top of the fucking world. That was like unheard of. That was insane. That was crazy. And I remember there was like you'd get like a bronze, a silver, and a and there'd be a gold little medal in your uh, channel description depending on how many subscribers you had. And I don't remember who it was. It might have been Niga Higa that got 100,000 subscribers first. Maybe it was Smosh. I don't know. I can't remember at this point. But back then, you could keep track of, like, the top 10 YouTubers. Because there wasn't that many. So you knew who was on top all the time. I knew, I knew who was on top all the time. I, I could list off everyone and the amount of subscribers they had in the top 10. You know, because it, it, it stayed there and it didn't fluctuate like it, it would slightly fluctuate here and there. But you knew what was going on all the time because it was a smaller community. And then fuck. I, but I do remember when Fred Figglehorn got to a million subscribers. He was the first YouTuber to get to a million subscribers. Fred Figglehorn. And when that happened, it was like, holy fuck, a million. Are you out of your mind? That is the craziest fucking shit ever. Nobody thought that was even possible. But you jump to nowadays and that's like average. That's like what that's like what every creator strives for and then you got to go beyond that. So it's nuts, dude. It's nuts. But we all knew the social media was going to get to this point eventually, but we we didn't know the consequences of it. But now we know cuz we're living in it. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my moves. Okay, so why don't we why don't we get into these fight predictions? I got like really sidetracked there, but that's okay. We like to get sidetracked around here. Side track, side track. Um. Okay. So this, have a look at the screen here. This is a fight prediction sheet. I make these sheets. Every main number card. I made this, and I make them. I make them every time. Uh, and I improve on them a little bit every time. So if you want to download this and print them off for you and your friends to watch during the fucking UFC uh, fight night. Not fight night. Fucking Noche. If you want to if you want to use this during Noche, then go. the link is in the description. It'll take you to a Google Drive folder and you can download it and print it off they're very i put a lot of work into this to make it nice all right so as you can see uh if you remember from last time i never had the draw option so what is this okay this is like a, this is a a sheet you use to make fight predictions you vote on who you think is going to win you check off who wins okay so you can check off vote whoever you want to vote for and whoever wins you check that off I never had the draw option before, but now if there's a draw, you can check that off. It gives you the number in which the fight is happening. So this is the first fight, and then it goes two, three, four, five, yada, yada, so on. I've got the name of the country on the side plus the flag. The ranks are here. I've got their fight record on the side. Win, lose, draw. I've also got the odds, their name, and the type of about and of course pictures of themselves so it's got everything you need other than their fucking fight nickname which i'm trying to implement i just don't know how to do that yet but yeah i make these every uh main number event so like i said if you want them the link is in the description takes you to a google drive download it fucking print it off boppity boopity that's that. So what I what I do now also is there's the full sheet. 
It's a full eight and a half by 11, right? That's the size eight and a half by 11. Yeah. So just on a normal, and I don't have too much color. Normally it doesn't have like the early prelims, prelims and main card. It's not, it's usually just black, but because it's Noche, I wanted to make it Noche themed. Uh, and last time I had the flags and behind the fighters, but I've, it looked not that great. So I went back to just the white background behind the fighters. But yeah, so there's this. And then I also segment. Let me just get this in the center here. I segment each uh, the prelim the, or the early prelims, the prelims in the main card as well. So this is the early prelims. I've got the prelims. Oh, this is being slow. And then the main card. Okay. So these segmented versions are also available in that Google Drive if you just want the main card or just the prelims or just the early prelims, which I don't know why you would want that. But if you want it, it's available. Okay. So we're going to go into our fight predictions right now. It's time. Fighting! <laughs> you seen that TikTok guy who's who does um like Bruce Buffer impersonations? He was fucking at the last UFC event, fucking talking to everyone. If Bruce Buffer retires, he has he is basically next in line Oompa Loompa. to be the Oompa Loompy. Okay, so the early prelims. There's only one fight in the early prelims, which is kind of wild to me. It's kind of wild, but it's fucking Chiwiwis. It's Chiwiwis versus... I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. Aroiqui Aro Ling. And the crazy thing about this guy is he only has one name. That's it. That's his name. He doesn't have a last name or a first... That's his name. That's it. All right, so you know I'm going for Chiwiwis. Okay, so I'm just going to plunk that right there. Why would I not go for Chiwiwi? All right, Chiwiwis. Okay, moving on to the prelims. Okay, let me just get some more of these. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four fights. Let me get four circles here. Okay, so the second fight, we've got Chares, Chares versus Borjas. Mexican versus Peruvian. Is that how you say it? That would be it, right? Peruvian? <laughs> Don't crab my apple. And then we've got a Mexican versus Brazilian and a Mexican versus Chilean and a Mexican versus Brazilian. Okay, so let's go in the second fight. Um, let's see, again, I'm not familiar with these people, but... I... Uh, hmm. There's also not a lot of ranked fighters, so I'm going to go for Cherez. I'm not going to think too hard about this, and I usually don't. And last, 305, I wasn't very close. The other cards before that I was, but this one I'm not. Okay, so Jarigui versus so Sousa. Sousa? Um, again, like I said last time, and I'll say it again this time, I want to go for the Mexicans. Yeah, but what am I going to do? Vote for Mexican every time? I mean, I don't know, dude. Don't touch each other, please. Okay, Data. Okay. I'm going for the Brazilian on this one, just to switch it up. Torres versus Baja Mondays. That's a great name, dude. That's a great name. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going for the Mexican on this one. Torres. And then for the last fight, I'm going for the Brazilian as well. Dumont. That's that's what I'm saying here. So Cherez, Souza, Torres, and Dumont. And then for the main card, here's what we're going to do for the main card. Let me just get uh, one more circle up in here. Va -pa -poo -pa -pow. Okay. So for the sixth fight, we got Rodriguez versus Osborne. Shoo. Yeah, well, I like Jamaicans. Um, 
You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go for the Jamaican. Jamaica me crazy. And then Zell Huber versus Ribovix. Zell Huber. Ortega versus Lopez. Just like last time when they didn't get to fight, but I voted anyway. Uh, Lopez, dude. Fucking, I don't know. I just, I love him. Ortega's fucking a living legend, but I like Lopez, man. And Grosso versus Shevchenko, you know I'm going for fucking Grosso. Not only is she sexy as a mofk, uh, she's Mexican, and I want her to win. She's got the belt. Let's keep that belt. You know, it's fucking noche. Don't lose it. Now, O'Malley versus Deval, 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 Marab, I should say. Um, See, this one I'm torn. I just... I like O'Malley. He's fucking awesome. But I like Marab too. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be sad to see O'Malley lose the belt. But I don't think he's going to. He's just he's that good and he's he's in his moment right now. So I'm gonna vote for O'Malley. So that's it. That's my predictions. We are and you know, all the other predictions that I've done, I usually want to like go over the results in the next episode but I always forget so we'll see if I remember this time but no guarantees okay why don't we watch a little clip here I've been talking for too long oh I just closed it I just closed a clip (laughs) can I bring it back hell yeah I brought it back oh that's a good one too actually that's yeah let's watch this one uh this lady's dad Always wanted a trampoline. <laughs> he doesn't know how to jump. That's not how you jump. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was so, oh my god, dude. Don't you love it when people smash their head into the drywall? What if you hit a stud? But they never do. They never hit a stud. Talk about athletic, all right? Even getting on the trampoline was difficult for him. Does he not know how to jump? (laughs) He jumps off of it, that's for sure. But fuck, man. Head first, right into the wall. What a guy. Huh? Do you want a puke video? Should I, uh... Should I not jump right into the puke videos? I don't know. Nah, fuck it. We'll we'll do this puke. Time. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta mute that. I wish I couldn't because it fits really well. Oh, God. You know someone's going to puke when they do that. You know, when they're... They're just trying to hold it in. That's what that's that position right there. That's the I'm holding in my puke right now. <laughs> and I am trying my hardest to not let it fucking projectile all over the place, but it never it always wah, it always bops out of there. Every single time, baby. Anyone else like anyone else hooked on nostalgia? If you are, uh, it's best to get over it. It truly is. Where's that video? Ah. For pretty much all throughout my 20s, I loved having that nostalgic feeling. I loved it. When it would come to me, I'd be like, ah, yeah, feels so good, baby. Uh... But it's actually not that great because it's you don't want to dwell on the past. The past was great, but that's the thing about TikTok. Like I was saying is the algorithm, it curates things to you and you see all these nostalgic videos and I've showed them on here. I've shown many of them on here of like, uh, you know, little activities you did in school or cartoons you used to watch and blah, 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 blah. Just it floods you with them. 
and the memories just pop in your head. You're like, boom, 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 boom. And you're like, oh my God, I forgot about this. I forgot about this. Oh my God, blah, 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 blah. And it makes you miss the past. You go, oh, I miss those days. I miss those days. But no, you shouldn't miss those days. Don't miss the old days. They're gone and they're never coming back. You have to embrace the now and accept the future, okay? It doesn't matter what age you are. Whatever you're doing as a kid, it's all new and it feels great and you're experiencing it for the first time and that's what influences you. And then as you get older, you now have an understanding of the world. So when all these, when all the, when the new generation comes up and they're starting new trends and new fucking things, you're looking at them and you're like, ah, don't do it like that. I did it like this when I was a kid and that's how you should do it. But the things that you did as a kid, your parents looked at you and were like, ah, why are you doing it that way? You should do it the way I did it as a kid. And when your parents did something as a kid, their parents looked at them the same way and it goes on and on and on. So for everyone out there who's looking at this new generation doing the things that they do and the way they do it and think it's bad, sure, to some extent, there are things that they do that is bad, but it's, but what are you going to do? You have to accept it. You have to accept it and embrace it. And that's the only way to get ahead because you can stay in the past and get stuck on those things and stick with that small group of people who want to stick with you. But that's not going to get you ahead. You have to embrace the future. Embrace the now, accept the future. That's what it was. Accept, or yeah, embrace the now, accept the future. (laughs) Okay? Do it. It's a realization I come to recently. And I would like all you people to come to that realization as well. It's very, it's very healthy and it feels good to do it. Don't worry about the past. It's done. Sure, it's nice to look back at those images of those fucking cool pencil crayons you used to draw with and those little fucking flat things with wheels that are colorful that you roll around in the gym on and the parachutes and all that shit. Yeah, it's cool to remember that stuff, but don't flood yourself with it. Don't intentionally watch it to make yourself sad. That's not good. You don't want to be sad. Why would you want to be sad? I lived all throughout my 20s being sad. I let depression and anxiety grab a hold of me and fucking pull me under. And the whole time I hated it. And I said to myself, this sucks. I don't want to be like this and blah, 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 blah. But I didn't do anything about it. And now that I'm actually doing something about it, I look back at those times and I think I didn't do anything about it because I was too comfortable and I liked it. I liked being sad. And a lot of you people like being sad. And one of the factors is the nostalgia. There's all these little things that happen throughout your life. And eventually you'll come to a realization. And everyone's different. Everyone takes a different time. And some people don't ever come to that realization that they need to get out of their funk. They stay in the funk forever. And if you're in a funk, like I was for over a fucking decade, you should just tell yourself, I can get out of this. If I can get out of it, you can get out of it. Anyone can get out of it. And I'm only talking about this because I know there's people watching this. Actually, there isn't people watching. But if there is people watching this, you're probably feeling something. You're probably feeling shit. Okay? Because everyone does. But it's possible to get out of it. It just takes a long time. It takes time. And it may not happen your first go around. It may not happen your second go around. It may not even happen your third or fourth or fifth go around. There's been many times throughout my 20s where I tried to get out of my funk. And I'd get into I'd get into a nice habit of climbing out of that funk hole and then I'd fall right back in and then I'd stay in for another while. 
And then I'd be like, fuck this. And I'd try to climb back out and then I'd fall back in. And I'd try to climb back out and I'd fall back in. But I am in a place right now, without getting into like full depth and detail as to what I'm actually doing, I am at a place right now where I am feeling better than I have ever felt in my entire life. And it is possible for everyone else out there to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Basically, the key things are exercise and eating healthy. So fucking important. And it took me forever to realize that. But when I was talking about nostalgia, I came across this video. Because we all remember that. Do you remember that viral video back in the day of the Australian guy? You know, the Australian guy talking about the dogs that are barking. And he goes, they came bounding in. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he does the impression of the dogs. Remember that guy? Well, this fella here found him. Like nowadays, he found him. So, uh, look who we found that way. So, what's the story? <laughs> <laughs> he just goes right into it. <laughs> I thought he was at least gonna say they came bounding over. Let's watch it again. So, uh, look who we found that way. So, what's the story? <laughs> just right into it I, I mean we gotta watch the original I should have I should have prepared that but let's get that up now they came bounding over here it is not allowed on the beach let's go full screen for this is this the original? It was uploaded 14 years ago. Fishes are in the parks outside certain hours. So how is it that these ago. two are roaming their neighbourhood, frightening the locals, and the council isn't stopping it? Now, yesterday morning, I came out into the front yard and the dogs were across the road. And as soon as they saw me, they came bounding over. <laughs> and I just made it into the front door in time. <laughs> Ray Graham is a... <laughs> His wife is terrified. Oh, well, it's really Oops. quite funny. I was, I was in bed sleeping at uh, 2 o'clock this morning. My wife comes in and says, oh, the shop's been, uh, someone ran into the shop. And I said, oh, what? So I jumped out of bed and all I had was my undies on. And I've walked out the front and I've seen uh, the car smashed and I've seen the bloke walking back to the car and so I've walked outside and I said oh what are you doing mate like you can't be leaving the scene and he goes don't be a hero mate and I said I'm not trying to be a hero but the police are coming and he just decided he'd scoot up the road and I just said nah it's not going on like that mate so I jumped in my car and I started chasing him up the road and then he went down a side street and then the police were coming and I flashed him and sent them off in the direction of him but mate all I had was me jocks on and I was chasing him up the street and I'm just like Okay. Ooh, Theo Vaughn had Bobby Lee on. I'm going to have to add this to the watch later. Whoops. You ever utilize that watch later fucking feature? Because, oh, oh, fuck. They had the pre... What is this? The pre-fight? Oh, we got to watch this later, too. Lots of stuff to watch later. Lots of stuff. They came bounding over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his wife was not having rat. it. You little fucking rat. Um, what else we got? I got a, I got a bunch of videos loaded up here. Um, oh, this one's kind of good. Check out this guy's neck. Holy Jesus! Oh no, this is a different. Is this standard <laughs> posture or is this a joke? <laughs> I, what the hell? He's got to be—he's <laughs> got to be joking, right? <laughs> that's, that's forty years of trucking, right there. That's—that's that's the Holy posture you'll get. Holy Jesus! Is this standard posture? That's or is nuts. This a joke. How good is your quality of life if that's how you're walking around? You know, if that's how you have to walk around, 
There's no way that guy has a good life. Or maybe he does. Well, who, do, who am I to say? All right? He's got a bag of groceries, and he's just gut out, fucking leant back, full speed ahead. I was thinking of a neck video, though. I guess I don't have a neck video. Here's a video of Tristan Tate. Uh, I don't know where, where he is at some sort of festival, maybe? Because he's wearing a uniform, some sort of costume. Uh, Which one looks the most delicious? Tristan! I think uh, the, this, the this, nude one. this little brown one here. Yeah, yeah. I'll kill him and eat him, I think. What do you think? Tristan! Yeah. I mean, it is good. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, I think I'll pick off this one. <laughs> yeah, just jump hey, this is Romania. You, you kill the goat. You yeah, cook it I mean, and prepare yeah, it. I'll yeah, sit and eat. Good. But like, this is good. Romanian gender roles. Let's go. It's good. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> I think fully Romanian. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. He, doesn't he seem like just the coolest guy? I would love to hang out with Tristan and, and, and Andrew. But the thing is, I feel like if I did hang out with them, at least Andrew, it wouldn't take long before I would just get like annihilated and 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 put in my place real quick. Cause I'm not on their level, and if you can't hang out with these guys if you're not on their level, they're the kind of guys who are at that level. And when when someone who's way below them tries to hang out with someone at their level, it's just it doesn't work. You can't hang out with someone at that level if you're way down here. It just, it can't, it doesn't work. Because they're just, they're too, they, they know they know too much. And they're, they're, you know what I mean? You've been around people like that. You could say it's like an alpha beta mentality, but like to the extreme. If I did hang out with Andrew Tate, I would immediately get like put in my place. You you see it with Aiden Ross and, and Andrew Tate. All right? They don't like... Like, they get along. Don't get me wrong. They can hang out. But it's... It's Andrew dominating Aiden the entire time. And it'll never be the other way around. Ever. And they don't even... They can't even really come to... Well, they, I mean, they, yeah, yeah. They can come to agreements for sure. But it's, uh, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? How, I mean, you could say that's how just humans are, but that's how every animal is. It doesn't matter what species you look at, there's a dominance hierarchy. And you see it. You see it portrayed. It doesn't matter. It just exists. Is it seriously going to fucking rain again? Alexa. Is it raining? It's raining right now. Are With you a break kidding in about me? Five minutes. I was gonna go for a long ass walk. It's raining. I guess I'll have to uh, I'll go to the gym. I'll go walk at the gym then. I guess I want to take my dog for a walk. Bah well, stay positive. Things happen. You can't control anything. You can't control the weather. So what? You were going to go for a walk. Oh, oh boo-hoo. It's raining. Figure it out, dude. Figure it the fuck out. Level up, man. Level up. Winter's coming. Don't let it bring you down. And I think we'll end it here. That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Welcome to the new world. And I hope you appreciate it. Bye.